see what these players can come up with this time. I'm really, really interested. Lucifront going a game down. Can he make it back? Let's find out, guys. Well, spawning down in the bottom left position, we have got the green Terran player. He plays for Mal Sports. It is Lucifron. And up in the top right, his opponent, the red Terran player from Millennium, it's Daishi. And Daishi at the moment doing a tremendous job to get that game win over Lucifron in game number one. Very, very nicely played by him. We'll see if he can do the same in game number two and try and take Lucifron out of the tournament 2 and oh, Lucifron, um, <clears throat> I, I want to say undeniably the more popular player because Daishi just doesn't have as many tournament results. Uh, he's not quite as well known as Lucifron. But it's really cool to be able to come to an event like this DreamHack Summer and see that actually he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them here. And uh, he's not afraid of Lucifer, and he's not intimidated, and he takes his chances when he can. That has put him on match point and on the verge of reaching the round of eight here. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. This game can swing both ways. So the key thing to be looking out for in this game is whether or not Daishi really pumps the upgrades like he did in the first. He got a very early second armory on Star Station, and that allowed him to get a nice upgrade lead, which I still think was one of the major contributing factors of him not losing that first big engagement by Lucifron's fourth as badly as he could have done. But, going into the later stages, Lucifron did catch it up. Positioning is king in TBT. Yes, it is. And that's what both players are going to be wanting to capitalize on this game. Absolutely. We see gas being taken by both players, but of course we have Marines being produced out of the barracks. They're going to go up to their factory tech ASAP by the looks of things. This SCV being very, very annoying right now, uh, trying to disrupt the mineral mining as well, but unfortunately Marine might end up having something to say about that. Lucifron micring his heart out against this SCV right now, and uh, well, this SCV might just end up paying the ultimate price for being cheeky. They're attempting to get a shot off on the Marine. It is actually at 40 out of 45 right now, so that massive drill turns out doesn't do a lot of damage. Now, have you noticed they've actually reversed their openings? They they're doing exactly what their opponent point. did in game one, which I find really quite amusing. That, well, early reactor dump from that barracks just means extra marines pumping out. The factory a lot quicker though for Lucifer means the Hellions can hit the field. He's going to be getting more map dominance mm -hmm. if he chooses to move out. So uh, interesting uh, different strategies over here on Neoplanet. And notice these marines going around the edge of the map from Daishi as well. He's going to be scouting just to see if there's anything really randomly sneaky here. Basically, any potential cheese coming out of Lucifron, or if he's intending on proxy anything. He hasn't been able to see anything so far. Really diligent scouting, I have to say. I think that's really important, actually, because yeah, from if our you, we've seen it all through the tournament this weekend. The players aren't afraid to go for proxy buildings, go for some sneaky stuff. And actually, just sending those two Marines out wasn't a massive, well, it wasn't really any investment for Daishi, mm -hmm. but it does mean that he now knows that he's relatively safe. However, Lucifron, he's getting ready with those headings. He does have he his natural base coming down, but then so does Daishi. Very even game for the time being. Yeah, both these guys getting their natural bases down. Uh, nothing too much of note at the moment. We do see the factory finishing up as well for Daishi. He's going to be swapping that round with the reactor, and look at this immediate starport getting started for him as well. So it looks like uh, Daishi's going to be going the drop route. No, there's no starport just yet for Lucifer. He's opting instead to spend his gas on getting that earlier armory before starting his starport. So we can expect uh, we can expect Hellbat drops from our Green Terran. Yeah, Hellbat drops. Well, we've seen them be very effective in game number one. Actually, it was how Lucifer really came back into that after taking the damage initially. But. Having said that, still a very similar build from Daisy the Army, the only difference, but he's still got the option to go for those Hellion drops, which do hit earlier, and it can be really quite frustrating to deal with. There's a scan coming down. This is just the same as you saw, almost an identical time to when we saw it last game. Exactly. And six, six minute yeah. 30, very, very good timing, and he spots that there's no tech lab on the starport, which I think is a big deal as well. Daisy going to be going for the Viking first here, just in case we see any um, 
early air-based aggression coming out of loose front. And this could end up paying a lot of dividends. Loose front poking with a couple of hands, you won't be able to do too much there. But uh, this medevac, I'm particularly worried about, depending on where he goes, especially on the southern part of the map, it's entirely possible that this Viking will be on an intercept course, so he needs to watch out. The Viking coming down for Daisy could really be a saving grace for him. Daisy also choosing to get a couple of Widow Mines out first before any Hellions. So while, yes, Lucifron has the map control at the moment, knows the natural base timings, whereas Daisy doesn't, the Viking, with that medevac coming out, the good marine placement, this hellback drop could get shut down really easily. Even with the Widow Mines there, mm. this may not go in the way Lucifron is planning it. Well, we'll see. Oh, and look at this. The Widow Mines getting put very far forward right now. And by far forward, I mean it might get roasted by some Hellions. No, in fact, he is going to scan it and pick that one off. In the meantime, the drop coming in directly behind it. Guys, and here we go. We have got the Marines trying to pick apart the medevac. And Hellions who are able to kite Hellbats, but look, there are four Hellions of his own from Lucifer. He's trying to push it and see if well, he's going to do substantial damage with this push. That Hellbat, only on about one hit point, it does actually manage to kill itself off. Uh, Daishi trying to come back in with his landed Viking, and now the Mineral Line is getting decimated. The Widow Mine doing a good job there, but also doing some splash damage against the SCPs, and finally it gets cleaned up. Number of workers killed six, not uh, not unsuccessful there for Lucifer. The worker count is currently 38 to 30, but Lucifer has lost a lot of army units there. Daishi, though, still losing more overall. Good attack from Lucifer. The other thing I'd like to add for Lucifer is that he had his natural expansion landed a lot sooner than that of Daishi. That's going to help just get really compile on top of the upgrade, the worker advantage that he's got to give him a great income and he's still going to be keeping up with the pressure. We've got a medevac coming in from the south position, another hellback drop ready to go towards Daishi's natural. Daishi cannot afford to no, lose no another chunk of, of SCVs. Oh, and he's got two mules here that just landed as well and uh, ooh, Daishi uh, not quite reacting fast enough. The medevac picking up the hellbats as well, trying to get out of there. The boost, though, was still on cooldown. He's now able to get out. We have got a little bit of damage going down as well. A double hell back drop into the main base of Lucifer. Daishi trying to repay the favor here and doing a decent job of it so far. He might actually boost them into the SCVs of natural expansion. This looks like too good an opportunity. And no, actually, he should have done it into the SCVs, but instead he did it behind the mineral line where the hell bats were waiting. So uh, he's actually going to go back into the main right now. I think there might have been an opportunity there, but it's so difficult to tell in these situations. Just grab a couple more safe SCVs in the main, and now he's going to boost in. Watch out, there's a missile turret there. He has to be careful. And ooh, so close to another five or six kills. Daishi, what is the kill count at? It's 14 to 8, so Daishi was more effective with his drops. He is a little bit supply blocked at the moment, though, but he's now regained. He's basically got back to work, apparently. And this is so similar to Game 1, where we saw these two really fluctuating between taking small advantages against each other. Medevac drop is going to be coming into the main base of Daishi. As we see, it's, well, two Hellbats. Is there anything to defend with? The answer, one Widow oh, Mine. Oh. And he does there get the Medevac. Immediately getting, but some SCVs are going to roast as well. And, uh, well, Hellbats here to defend. It looks like these will be able to pick off a couple of SCVs in gas before they bite the dust there, as well as the one building the turret. So now 17 to 14. Lucifer once again taking the lead in terms of numbers of workers killed this game. Hellbats aren't going to kill each other, and I think we're going to be seeing a pattern here. It turns out the direct counter to Hellbats is Hellbats, Smaddles. Well, they're strong units, so yeah. it is going to be that way. Now, anyway, this is still a very equal game. We can see from the supplies the near identical. And that is really the big tell. However, Daishi loading up three medevacs full of hellbats, if he comes over with a drop that big, it could do catastrophic damage to the mouse player. Yeah, I think uh, Lucifer definitely has to be on his toes here. As long as he can make sure that he pulls the SCVs in time, he should be okay. But if he doesn't, the damage gets done faster, which is what you seriously need to worry about. Daishi just cutting straight across the middle of the map, and that's because these Vikings are kind of paving the way for him, but he needs to get out of there. Yeah, he is going to lose that fight, but he does now know that the Viking's there. He's also making sure they do great oh, land zero there. Zero losses from Lucifer. What fantastic micro. And look at this. That means the dropships go away. And, whoa. He's just getting more dropships. Yeah. He can afford to take losses. This is like the D-Day landings right now. He's just charging it all in, uh, hoping just a little gets through. Here we go. And one of the dropships actually goes down pretty quickly. Eight Hellbats now into the main, but the Vikings are going to be able to pick apart the Medivacs. But how much damage will these Hellbats do in the meantime? It looks like they're overpowering Lucifer over there. The Vikings now landing, though. And uh, this is a pretty even fight right now. But with the Vikings landing, I think Lucifer has an edge, and he will be able to clean this up. But simultaneously, another drop into the natural, and Lucifer is dropping the natural as well. Everything is going on. and I think Daishi lost a lot of SCVs here. His supply is down to 43 versus Lucifer on 76 and please, please note 
that that entire army from Daishi, because that was five that was all of ships. It. That was all of That it. was everything. He's massively behind now. Look at the army supply. Look at the worker supply. The counter drop from Lucifron was spectacular. Yeah, about 12 things happening at once right yeah. there, and Lucifron handling it better than Daishi, basically. And now this means that Daishi is playing massively catch up, and if he doesn't catch up very quickly, he's going to be running into some problems. Upgrade wise, he does have a small advantage. No, he actually doesn't. I thought he did have plus one. Um, Already done ahead, but no, another drop coming down here from oh, Lucifron. My CV's going down, a tank is out for Daishi, but things not looking good for the Millennium player. Yeah, this is a, a very, very injured Daishi trying to rescue this game right now, but Lucifron, uh, with that double pronged play of the counter drop with killing off those five drop ships in his main, Daishi just making what I, I really want to say, making the wrong strategic choice there in uh, trying to go for basically that doom drop into the main base because as soon as oh, he the SUVs, the SUVs, Vikings, they're getting very low Jorasa. not quite only well i say only 45 that's a huge number and yep. this definitely in a big lead but i think as soon as daishi lost those vikings he really needed to be wary of continuing with his plan for the doom drop and I think continuing meant that Lucifron had a little bit of time to prepare, so uh, that's not going to end up being too great for him. We see the Vikings from Lucifron heading out across the map now as well, wanting to make sure he completely establishes map dominance here. He's looking for the starport, he wants to see if he can uh, pick off these Vikings as they come out perhaps, but uh, right now he's just going to function as a scout for this medevac that's popping in. Now this medevac, if it deals more SCV damage, I fear there may not be a way back into this game for Daishi because he is going to lose more SCVs here. So problematic, another 3 or 4 go down. Behind this, of course, as well, Lucifron is securing up his third base. With that third, SCV's already transferring. He's got such a spectacularly large increase in income compared to that of his opponent. He's been very patient here, I have to say. The Vikings just staying outside the natural expansion. Daishi not really wanting to engage here yet because he simply doesn't have the Viking count. He's only got two here right now. All the Hellbats are busy defending what SCVs he has left, and Lucifer is just able to macro up to his heart's content. Yes, he might be able to 1A and kill Daishi now, but he's not 110% sure of it yet, so why not just press your income advantage further? Take a look at the 73 to 46 workers right now. Lucifer is also on his third base. He's playing this nice and calm, wants to make sure he definitely has a firm grip on this game before going into the kill. Now, the one plus side for Daishi is he does at least have his third Orbital Command finished, so he's got the additional mule, but that's got a bit of a double-edged sword, because unless he takes the expansion, he's going to be muling a lot more on bases, which are going to run out of minerals so much faster than that of his opponent. Mm. And Lucifron, in a war of attrition, will start to win. Lucifron even now starting up his fourth. If you thought Hellbats could take a lot of damage, I think these two right here... <laughs> Even more imbalanced, surrounded by a wall of tanks. That's not a spell you can cast in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that might be in a StarCraft MMO, but it's definitely <laughs> not something that is valid here. Loose front moving out across the middle of the map. Daishi actually a little bit supply blocked on 121 for a second there. And Lucifron enjoying a 40 supply lead and now getting his fourth base as well. Base is just really taking a massive advantage oh, for Lucifron. And yeah, Daishi. He's not gonna. He's not in threat of losing instantly because he is starting to get up a sizable army. But the longer this game goes on, the supply advantage for the mouse sports player is getting greater and greater. It's so hard for Daisy to come back into this as well because right now he's saying, "Yes, I took that early damage." But after I took that damage, I'm trying to do everything perfectly and come back into this game. But at the end of the day, his opponent just has that much more money to play with, as you can see here from the income tab. So Daishi trying his hardest, and it's such a frustrating position to know that you're trying your hardest, and that with good play, your opponent might just still be able to roll over. Now there's another Hellback drop coming into the main base. There's not very much here to defend. Oh, the SCVs aren't getting pulled. A couple more do get taken out. Simultaneously, Lucifron ready to go into the third that Daishi needs to secure to, in honesty, have any chance in this game now. But Lucifron, he does not care. He is moving in. He is going to go and take out that third orbital. He's forced to lift back. And with this, the income for Daishi is incredibly low. And that is what's going to be really hurting him now. <gasps> oh, and two more Hellbats coming in just as those SCVs get returned. Nice pull once again from Daishi. But this is now a four-base economy for Lucifron versus effectively a one-base economy from Daishi. This is not looking pretty at all. Lucifron just doing so much up and wow, so calm, so collected. He just pulls back. I think he knows the advantage he's in right now. And he's going, hey, you know what? I'm just going to chill out here and wait for another opportunity to strike. Daishi's got the tank liner, but it's spread out really, really thin. 
And that's because he just doesn't have the money to make much more. We've also got plus three vehicle weapons coming down for Lucifer. And he's getting all of the upgrades. Oh, a couple of better backs could go down here. The Viking count superior for the Millennium player. But look at this. Just a small train of units heading up towards the third of Deji once more. And I say a small train, but they're Hellbats. And Hellbats are very nice. There are some tanks there, though, trying to defend. The Vikings still pushing forward. Lucifer, he's maxed out, though. He is indeed. Oh, Deishi coming in for an attack. This looks like a little bit of a desperation maneuver against the natural expansion here. That supply depot getting raised because it gets additional armor. No, it doesn't. Uh, but Lucifer doing it anyway. And look at this. Completely getting crushed here. Deishi down to 118 supply. Now, this attack was repelled at the third, though, because there are three sieged up tanks. But Deishi's attempted aggression means that he lost an awfully large chunk of his army right there. And, uh, well, this Thor is basically all he has left to show for it. The current army supplies, by the way, guys, are 117 to 60. Yes, he's ahead in workers as well but really it's this number here that is probably going to win Lucifer on this game. Yeah, Lucifer is starting to move across the south side of the map. He is going for the kill because he so, knows he's maxed out. Things that Daishi can do right now to win him the game. He might be able to funnel Lucifer's entire army to massive choke point and get some great siege tank shots off of the army. That will buy him time to mack her up. Or he can do some sort of drop that might absolutely annihilate Lucifer if he doesn't pull his SCVs or something like that. Beyond those two possibilities though, I just don't really see much in the way for Daishi right now. And I feel like um, that as long as Lucifer is careful, it's a matter of time. Good scan goes off there from Daishi. You're going to allow him to start shelling through those tanks but of course their vision being granted by the vikings that Lucifer has over the tank line and that is just allowing him to slowly pick apart these tanks from the millennium player he's going he's, for it yeah this is gonna go this, this is, is gonna be big yeah this might be the last battle of the game guys the hellbats trying to absorb as much damage as possible in front Lucifer are keeping a lot of those tanks on siege as well the maximum dps and daishi's tank line already spread thin is going to disappear well played gg and Lucifer, ladies and gentlemen, ties the series up 1-1 with a win in game number two.